Cars Channel News and Review Car. Two thousand seventeen Ford Mondeo Dren Wagon Review. Dave jumps into the two thousand seventeen Ford Mondeo Dren Wagon to find out why the model is a hard car to hate, but an even harder one to love. Pros and cons. How good are wagons? The space, the road manners. I think if more people bought wagons instead of SUVs, they'd probably be far happier. Alas, the sales figures suggest otherwise. But, since Ford and Holden's large car-based wagons are either extinct or about to be, the family lugging mantle has fallen to mid-size wagons. Mid-size wagons such as the 2017 Ford Mondeo wagon. Medium car sales may have ended 2016 down 4.5% year-on-year, but that doesn't mean the segment is devoid of quality, particularly when it comes to wagons. Sitting above the $39,040, before on-road costs, and being a diesel wagon, the trend is well-equipped. Keyless entry and a push-button start, adaptive cruise control, ACC, and 17-inch alloy wheels are all standard, along with dual-zone climate control, an electronic parking brake, a rear-view camera, front and rear parking sensors, automatic projector headlights with daytime running lights and auto high beam, and rain sensing wipers. Ford's programmable MyKey system is also included, along with front fog lights, rear privacy glass, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and 8-way heated power adjustable cloth and leather sports front seats with three memory settings for the driver. The Tren Wagon also comes with a lane departure warning and lane keep assist, although it can occasionally feel as though you're forced to battle the latter for who's right when it comes to staying in your lane. However, blind spot monitoring is a strange omission, reserved exclusively for the $7,000 steerer top spec titanium. As James Ward called out in April last year in his Ford Mondeo Tren sedan review, there's not too much inherently wrong with the Mondeo. It just lacks flair, and fails to inspire. Unfortunately, while I personally dig the wagon body style over the sedan, it's the same scenario with the wags. Inside, the cabin is a mix of gloss black accents, silver, black, and gray trims, some chrome detailing, and gray stitching highlights. There's a beige headliner, a soft touch dash, some harder wearing plastics, clicky power mirror and window switches and similarly non-premium feeling indicator and wiper stocks. Vision out isn't bad thanks to big windows, A and C pillar glass cutouts, and a respectably sized rear view mirror and rear window. However, be aware of the Mondio's thick B and C pillars, particularly when changing lanes or reversing. Admittedly a potentially subjective area, I and others found the Mon's front seats to be disappointing and rather uncomfortable especially on longer drives. Luckily, despite a slightly awkward rear door aperture, jumping into the back seat is more positive, with the second row offering stacks of rear headroom and loads of rear legroom. Tow room is a little more limited, and there is a small rear floor hum to contend with, but those in the back are gifted rear air vents, a fold-down center arm rest with two cup holders and a storage cubby, one 12-volt outlet two map pockets, and small door pockets. On the road, the Mondio's hit-and-miss nature again comes to light. Rarely poor but equally rarely impressive, the Ford Mondio trend wagon executes its brief with adequate poise and little excitement. Cruising at 100 km per hour on the freeway, at around 1,800 revolutions per minute, the Ford's cabin is impressively hushed with only mild wind noise and fractionally more road noise noticeable. The diesel engine and dual-clutch automatic gearbox work well together, with the transmission only occasionally caught napping. Responding quickly and cleverly enough in most situations, drivers can take matters into their own hands via the paddle shifters, although, why you'd want, need paddle shifters in a diesel family wagon is still beyond me flexible and able to deliver positive linear torque from between 1,000 to 1,500 revolutions per minute, the 2.0-liter oiler provides good, 
steady pickup from 1500 2000 revolutions per minute, with most shifts taken care of below 2500 revolutions per minute. That said, an early stomp on the throttle can result in some front wheel scramble from the 235 mm wide, 50 aspect Goodyear efficient grip tires, and some rudimentary diesel clatter from the engine as revs rise beyond 3000 to 4000 revolutions per minute. On the plus side, the brakes are quite good, washing off speed well via an ice, progressive, and consistent pedal, and the middle tier Mondios ride. Handling balance is a good family car-oriented mix of comfort and dynamic performance. It still doesn't enjoy sharper imperfections, such as potholes and train, tram tracks, but the ride never becomes busy or crashy, although negotiating consistent corrugations and ruts is where the Mondio is least happy. Speed humps do risk scraping the Ford's low front end, and be it driving around town or through tighter country bends. The 1,713 kg Mondio, heavier than all of its key rivals, can feel quite big and heavy. Before spending time with the 2017 Ford Mondio Tren Wagon, the long-serving nameplate was one I felt more Australians should be buying into, or at least considering, especially since the 2010 demise of the Falcon Wagon. But while it's not a bad car, it isn't perfect. And in this specification at least, despite its strong list of standard equipment, it's the things you use every day, such as the seats, tailgate, and driver aids, that proved the most frustrating. The Mondio then, in isolation, is no bad car. Its negatives, however minor, are legitimate though. Thus, barring some shortfalls, the 2017 Ford Mondeo Tren Wagon is a car that delivers on expectation most of the time, but equally, rarely exceeds it. Click the gallery tab for more images by Tom Fraser. Disconcertingly inconsistent, the electric power-assisted steering is not only odd and somewhat delayed in its response, its weighting changes from being quite hefty just off-center, to lightening up as you add more lock. Add to this the sometimes patchy intervention from the lane keeping and adaptive cruise control systems, and combined, confidence can be occasionally hard to muster. Frustratingly too, especially in zero tolerance Victoria, the ACC must be activated slash turned on every time you get in the car, and set speeds can only be adjusted by a minimum of 5 km per hour increments. The Mondio's a lack of a digital speedo is another sore point worth mentioning. Interestingly, although the Mondeo wagon seat-up capacity trumps its previously mentioned rivals, its maximum volume is the smallest of the lot. Both are also mere drops in the ocean comparative to the old Falcon wagon, which offered a colossal, and Holden Sport wagon topping minus 1,254 liters seats up and 2,584 liters seats down. Regardless. The Mondio's rear end is home to storage cubbies, one 12-volt outlet, two tie-down points, a foldable flat floor, a space saver spare tire, an adjustable cargo blind, and two unfathomably annoying luggage hooks that are so incredibly stubby that they are rendered largely useless. Also less than helpful is the Mondio's heavy non-power tailgate that's unnecessarily springy to try and close an issue worked around by the power tailgate standard on the titanium Ford Mondeo wagon.